Welcome to Beyond Tabletop. In this video, I'll show you some of the basics of our two launch products, the Pathfinder Character Sheet and the RPG Battle Map. Starting on the homepage, I'm going to click the Login button here. First time you do this, Google Authorization window should appear. Click Accept down at the bottom, you'll be redirected to the dashboard. Oops, looks like it's not redirecting me to the dashboard. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes you gotta click it more than once, but we're working on that. That'll be fixed by the time you see this video. Um, all right, so uh, now that you're on the dashboard, we're gonna, you can either create a sheet or a battle map. Uh, we're gonna just go ahead and create a sheet. That'll open up in a new tab. <clears throat> After the sheet loads, you'll land on the overview tab. There's nothing filled out yet, so we'll come back to this. Uh, next tab is the general tab. Here we can start building the basics for our character. I'll go ahead and make level 11 ranger. And we'll name him Faldor the Hunter. Uh, you can enter other profile details over here on the right, a few others on the left, but this is good for us for now. Next I'll click the Abilities tab, I'll quickly set some abilities, Let's see that's good, and it's fine, don't need a big int, wisdom, need at least a good wisdom, let's go with a 9, charisma. Alright, so that's some good stats. Um, and you'll see, uh, as I'm entering these values, the, the columns over here on the right are changing and affecting our saves. Everything in the sheet will calculate in real time, so you don't have to worry about applying or updating it yourself. Uh, now I'll go over to the Combat tab. You have a lot of fields here and a lot of stuff that's calculated for you. Uh, first, let's look at HP. You'll notice that your total HP automatically pulls in your con bonus, so all you have to do is enter what our rolled HP is. For our level 11 Ranger, let's say he has about 60 rolled HP. Uh, if you're in a battle, you can also use this wounds field to keep track of how much damage your character takes. So, as you, you can see, as the wounds go up, the current HP goes down. <clears throat> uh, down below, we've got Bab, DR, Spell Resistance, Initiative, and Style. Style is where you can specify two uh, weapon fighting or wielding two-handed. Uh, but we don't have any weapons yet, so let's come back to this. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, on the right you've got AC and speed. We won't worry about this too much since uh, we're, this ranger is a human. And once we add our armor in a later section, uh, the AC will automatically pick that up, so we'll come back to that again. Uh, next up is skills. Uh, the big thing to notice here is that only class skills have uh, this checkbox selected. Uh, when you choose your class, these are automatically set. If you have a trait or feat that lets you take a skill as if it were a class skill, you can just check that box too. So let's say I have a trait that gives me a praise, I can check that box. As long as you don't switch your class, that will save. So I'll just enter a few ranks here. Uh, and you can see because this is a class skill, I get that plus three class bonus as soon as I enter a rank. Uh, so I'll just enter a few ranks, not going to spend too much time on this, just want to show for later. Oops. Uh, yeah, that should be good. Okay, so those are my skills, uh, and now we'll move on to gear. Alright, first thing I'll do is add my primary weapon. Uh, let's say I've got a plus two composite longbow uh, with a strength uh, rating of three. It's a ranged weapon over here on type. Uh, my attack bonus will be plus two, so you just enter two. Uh, plus two for the uh, enchantment bonus, or enhancement bonus. And uh, my damage is gonna be a total of five with the plus three strength rating and plus two in enhancement bonus. <coughs> uh, the rest of the stuff is just normal. D8 for damage, we crit on a 20 with a times three crit. Uh, it's got a range of 110, I think. Uh, we don't have any special ammo and this doesn't misfire, so that's good for that. Uh, in the next column, I'll add my armor. Uh, let's say I'm wearing a plus two breastplate. Plus 
to breastplate, which is armor. Uh, you can change it to shield or magic or other. <clears throat> uh, and then this is a this bonus has a, a plus six. Um, it has a max dex of three and a check penalty of two because it's a plus two. Um, I don't care about spell failure failure because I don't cast arcane spells. Uh, the weight is thirty pounds. Uh, lastly, I'll equip this armor. Now, if we click back over to the combat tab, you'll see my AC has gone up. See, so we've got a total AC of 19, 3 from dex, and 6 from my armor, and then the 10 that you normally get, 10 base. And uh, if we click over to skills, you can see every skill that is affected by a check penalty has a little minus 2 next to it uh, for my active armor's check penalty. So you can see on the totals here, we've got minus 1. This climb used to be an 11, but now it's a 9 because of the minus 2. So all that stuff is automatically calculated. Uh, now that we've entered some weapons, let's actually look at the combat tab again. There's a new section available called Extra Attacks. This section is useful for haste or for characters to use two weapon fighting. If I click on Style and select two weapon fighting, uh, you'll see two new options appear down at the bottom. Uh, those are my uh, offhand and main hand weapon selections. Uh, I'm not using a character that uses a, a weapon that can be used for two weapon fighting, but uh, you can play with it on your own and see how that works. Uh, wielding two-handed, similarly I'm not using a two-handed weapon. What this does is it uh, multiplies your strength bonus to damage by one and a half. Uh, so if you're wielding a melee weapon this is uh, with two hands, this is what you want to choose. So I'm just going to switch that back over to none. And we'll go over to lists. Uh, lists, <clears throat> uh, you can see there are a few starting lists that can be helpful. If you don't want to use them, you can delete them or rename them. Uh, I'll just note that I know common, everyone speaks it, uh, and I'll delete the other lists. Normally I would probably fill these out, but uh, you, you get the idea of a list. You can add list items, you can delete them and then you can show on overview if you want. This will mean it'll show up over on the overview tab, which we'll go back to. Uh, then on the right here, you've got consumables. Uh, consumables are good for uh, things like potions and other stackable gear. I'll put down that I've got uh, two cure serious wounds, which I've got two, and this is, uh, I think serious is 3d8 plus max of 15, so just put that in the description. So now I've got these, uh, that list of my consumables, and I can add other ones, just like lists if I want to, but uh, I'll just delete those now. Uh, lastly on this page, custom stats. These are just really basic stats. If you have a, a custom stat that really doesn't fit anywhere else, like uh, if you wanted to keep track of you know, how many nightmares you had every night, uh, nightmare, total nightmares, and we'll put that at 110, since I have a lot of nightmares. Uh, so then you can you can uh, check these and, and this is just a number field that you can increment or de increment. Uh, okay, so over to the feats tab. Uh, this uh, tab is split into two sections, uh, with your feats on the left and the SRD feats on the right. You can scroll down uh, to look at them alphabetically, or you can just start typing a feat in a field, and uh, it will narrow down the list. Once you find the feed that you want, you can click the plus button and it will pop up on your list over here. Um, if you can't find the feed that you want, just enter it on the left by clicking, uh, by adding a blank field and filling out the details. You can see here, if you add a blank feed, you can just fill this out. So this is my favorite feed, because it's not listed, and the prerequisites if I wanted to add them are, maybe it's Die Hard. Uh, I can add a summary here best summary ever, and then benefit, normal, special info. These are just fields you can use for, uh, you can use them if you want to, you can keep them blank if you want. Uh, the benefit field is, uh, as it says, it's the benefit of the feat. Normal, uh, it shows you normally what would happen without the feat. Info is just like basic info, it's basically like the summary but longer. And then special are special cases that are caused by the feat. Uh, same as the SRD, same as the book. So uh, over to spells now. Uh, <clears throat> on the spells tab, I can see my currently empty spell book on the left. Under uh, and under that are my uh, spells per day. 
if you have like uh, as a sorcerer if you have spells known that will also show up here uh, and then on the right is a list of spells similar to the list of feats you can filter them out just the same way so um, magic missile of course that's not a ranger spell so that's not going to show up but you can see uh, magic filters it down not very much <laughs> uh, ammunition there's a good one uh, so yeah, you can see not very many spells with the word ammunition or amu in them. Uh, so let's say I wanted ricochet, ricochet shot. I could add that just like a feat and it shows up over here. I can click to see more details. Um, and close it back up. Or I can I click the pencil to edit it. Uh, similarly to uh, feats, if you wanted to add uh, your own custom spell, you can select the spell level. So I want to add a level 4 and then you can uh, click the pencil to edit all the details. That's way too much work, so I'm not gonna do that. But I will point out that you can uh, quickly enter the prepared and remaining amount. If you have a certain number of this spell prepared, a certain number remaining, you can increment that right here. Uh, if for some reason you wanna add a spell that uh, is not a ranger spell, if I wanted to add a sorcerer or a wizard spell, I would just go here, select uh, wizard, and then wait for them to load, and then delete the ammunition and then it would list all the Sorcerer and Wizard spells and I could uh, add Acid Splash if I wanted to. Great, uh, and then you can like make these, you can uh, close up the each, each spell level group so that you can find things easier. All right, lastly, the last tab, we've got Conditions. Um, over on the left, uh, we have some conditions that are built into Pathfinder. Activating any of these will affect relevant stats and show a description of the condition's effects. So if I turn on uh, Exhausted and go over to my Abilities tab, you'll see a minus 6 from Exhausted under both Strength and Dex, the two stats that it normally affects. And you can see the total and the mod has been updated. Uh, again, over in uh, Reflex, this mod is 0 because this mod is 0. Uh, so it's going to affect everything on the, in the sheet that's affected by Dex and Strength. And I forgot to point out earlier, uh, Dex is actually going to be uh, maxed out at 3 regardless of what my total value was because I'm wearing armor that has a max Dex of 3. Uh, that means that uh, my max Dex for skills and for, uh, I think, is that skills all it affects? Whatever it affects, that's what it does here too. Uh, okay, back to conditions. Turn off exhausted. Uh, you can also add custom conditions. Uh, you can use these for your own conditions or spell effects is what they're most helpful for. So I'm going to add one for bull strength. And this just gives you a plus four to strength. That's just the description there. You don't have to add it if you don't want to. Uh, down here at the, the plus button, you can add effects. <clears throat> conditions can have multiple effects, but bull strength just has one, so we'll just add one. Uh, strength is selected by default, but here you can see uh, these are all the abilities that you can affect with a condition. Uh, basically, it's any skill, any save, different types of attacks and damage. You can affect all the skills at once, all the saves, uh, abilities, uh, different combat things. Uh, lots of stuff you can affect, but right now we're just going to do uh, strength. Uh, finally, in the formula field, we're just going to put N, the letter N, plus 4, uh, where N stands for strength. Uh, and it doesn't matter what effect stat you choose from here, it's always going to be N. Uh, just as kind of like a variable to substitute for the uh, ability that you, or the, the attribute that you pick. Uh, now I'll, I'll click the checkbox up at the top to activate it, and look in my abilities tab, and sure enough, we've got plus four from both strength right there, popping up my total to 21. All right, that's, um, that's just about it. Uh, but before we go, let's look back at the overview tab. Uh, and now you'll see a good cross section of your sheet in an easy to digest format. Uh, attacks are calculated along with damage rolls right here. Uh, you've got HP, AC, saves, skills, active conditions, full strength. And this will also show the, uh, the uh, core conditions as well. Uh, and then your feats and your spells. Uh, you can even click on a feat uh, to expand, or a feat or a spell to expand it to see more information. So it's uh, seeing a real feat there, you can see everything, and then 
a spell, uh, you can edit the remaining prepared on the screen as well. So you can keep, you basically, when you fill out your sheet, and then once you're done filling it out, you can use it from this view. Uh, the goal of the overview page is not having to click through a bunch of tabs to see what you want to see. Um, and then down here, I told the languages list to be on the overview tab, so it showed up over here. Uh, and that's just about it for the character sheets. Uh, there's more, but that's, uh, that's just about it for the basics. So let's uh, close this. Now this is just going to save automatically. This is a Google Drive document, so uh, anytime I make a change, I can make the change and then immediately close it and it will save. Um, similarly, if you share this sheet with someone else, they can look at it at the same time and see all the changes in real time. So I'm just going to close this and we're going to make a brand new map. And this sheet hasn't shown up yet, but if I refresh, you'll see uh, Beyond Tabletop Character Sheet. I can click this to open the sheet back up, the one we were just working on. All right, so then we're going to add a new battle map. After the battle map loads, you'll see a token and a small square. These are the starting objects and the building blocks of the map. But first, let's look at the toolbar. Uh, you can see the arrow up here. You can click that to collapse the toolbar, get it out of your way. Uh, this is useful for um, if you've got a lot of stuff going on the map, you want to move around and kind of look at things. But most of the time, you're going to want to keep this open uh, so you have access to all the features. Um, uh, so there are four icons here. We've got add token, add shape, go to center of the map, and edit map details. Clicking on any object will bring up its details over here on the toolbar. Um, clicking on a token allows you to change its color. Let's say yellow, or green, or 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 oh, that's black, right. 555, 555. Um, so these are just CSS colors you can use. Um, words for colors, or if you know CSS, you can use a CSS color there. Um, if you don't want to have a color, you can tell it to be transparent and use a, an image instead. Uh, I don't have an image handy, but uh, it just puts the image in instead of the letter and the token shape, just puts the image in as is. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Oh yeah, you can enter status and damage uh, for the token, for the, the player or uh, thing that's being represented by the token to keep track of stuff during uh, play. So if this is my ranger, I'll just go ahead and give him a name. Ranger, he's a medium guy, and he took 11 damage, and he is currently poisoned, I guess? So he's poisoned. Now when I click on other things, I can click back to the ranger and remember, oh yeah, he's got taken 11 damage, and he's poisoned. You can also use this for health. Basically, you can use this for whatever you want to keep a number there. Um, uh, the other cool thing about tokens, let's add a few tokens, and let's give them some names. So we've got make this guy green, and we'll make our ranger blue. Uh, so we've got these tokens. Uh, this is going to be a barbarian, wizard, and a cleric. Uh, you can see down here in this initiative order list, um, we've got all four of our tokens, and we can uh, give it a value to change the initiative order. So this Barbarian's at 19, and Wizard got a 12, Cleric got a 17. So now they're arranged by initiative order. <clears throat> what's, it, what's next? Okay, so then the shape. Um, uh, shapes you can use as obstacles for players, or as like a larger room or building or something. You can change uh, the size, you can move it around. Um, uh, you can click round over here so it's, it's rounded instead of squared. Um, if you're going to use it as like a building where players are inside, um, I would recommend clicking the pinning button. That way people don't accidentally move it. You can move characters around inside of this room. Um, and shapes are always going to go behind tokens. So you don't have to worry about that being uh, covered up. Uh, so this is pinned. It's round if it's like a field or something, or like a round room. Uh, you can also give it a background image, just like tokens. It'll just uh, expand to fit inside of the shape that you make. Um, uh, and again, you just, uh, you just paste in a URL and, you, and it will, it'll replace the color. Oh yeah, you can change color, I forgot about that. You can change the color of this thing. Same, same as the tokens. 
Uh, and finally, if you click on the uh, gear over here, that will give you the map details. It gives you a little bit of text about the grid system. So this is the image that we use for the background of the grid. It's an 80 by 80 pixel image uh, that contains four 40 by 40 pixel squares. So if you want to create your own grid image uh, for the entire background of the sheet, uh, you can do that. Um, and just make sure it's it's about that. It, it just make sure it's uh, 40 by 40 tiles so it lines up with where the tokens are going to be dragging to. Uh, so you can edit that here in this field. Uh, you just upload it somewhere, anywhere that's public, and paste it in. And that'll do it. So that's, uh, that's the basics for Beyond Tabletop, Pathfinder Character Sheet, and RPG Battle Map. Thanks for watching. Have fun.